Bing bing whoop whoop. Bing bing whoop whoop. Bing bing whoop whoop. Wait, who's starting? You? You are. Oh. <laughs> there, one for the outtake reel. Uh, hi, everyone. Mark Lynn here from the education department. Uh, John's here with me today, too. We are coming at you from our homes, as most of you are probably uh, safe at home. Uh, we wanted to continue education even though we aren't at the brewery and people aren't out and about right now. So we came up with the idea of going through our cupboards and just seeing what we had available for proper glassware or the closest thing to it. So we wanted to give you some ideas of how to use proper glassware or something close to it while you're at home. All right, so now that we've kind of gone over what this is all about, um, John, why don't you start with that red? Can do. So red, uh, John is using Red's Rye IPA, which is a fan favorite, rye-based IPA, uh, John's favorite, um, and he has chosen the Mug Club mug. So um, of course you don't have to be a Mug Club member to use a mug. The joy of that is that it holds a great amount of beer, it has a handle for easy um, drinking, and it's sturdy, right? So the idea behind that glassware is that it can withstand whatever you're putting in it. So. Um, if you don't necessarily, oh, perfect head pour. That was great, John, so proud. Um, you know, kind of as far as what you can find in your cupboard, any sturdy glass with a handle kind of acts as a mug. So whether it's glass or a plastic tumbler or whatever, so kind of still does the same job. Okay. Marco, what glass do you have for us? I better, go, I better go light to start. So I'm going with the shaker pint and unraveled. Cool. Will you do me the honors of describing this beer? Listen to this beautiful sound though. Um, there it is. Unraveled one of our new IPAs. It has a copious amount of hops, but much like all Founders beers, it's nice and clear and nice and clean. And she's pouring it right down the side at a 45 degree angle like a professional. And as that fills up, that beer is gonna be helped a little bit by that shaker pint to really kind of release some of those aromas for us. But also, if you do happen to have a little bit more in-depth of a glass collection, there is a glass called an, an IPA glass, uh, which is actually designed with a little bit of uh, taper to it, where it kind of opens up at the top to really kind of get the maximum aroma. And for a beer with that much hops in it, if you do have an IPA glass, that's what I would recommend. I'll tell you, this pairs perfectly together, and I'm really enjoying the first sip. Mm. It's one of my favorite new ones. All right, next, I want to see KBS, sir. Ooh. And I'm using my breakfast out breakfast mug, so. Yeah. Bottle oh, opener ready. So this is where we start getting creative, right? So we have some of the official glassware, and then now uh, comes the part where you're like, I am at home, and this is what I have to work with. So while John is displaying the proper pour, the right angle, uh, with a coffee mug, of course, you do have to kind of watch so you don't overflow if your coffee mug is smaller than what the, the bottle holds. So uh, most of you are probably familiar with KBS, one of our longstanding barrel age brands, but the joy of using a coffee mug is that that does kind of act like a snifter and it really kind of sticks your nose right into that beer before you even get it on your tongue because your sense of smell is a lot of the tasting experience. So you're kind of experiencing before it even hits your Tongue, yeah, so. This mug especially, because it kind of ta happens to taper in. It's almost like we designed these to drink beer out of in the first place. Weird. Weird. That's And you know, the joy of a coffee mug is that nobody judges you if you're drinking coffee, no matter what time of day it is, and they shouldn't have to ask you what's in that mug. Like a morning Zoom meeting. Aha, <laughs> yeah. <weird>. yeah. <laughs> All right, speaking of delicious beverages, I think you had a tall IP, all day IPA that we need to look at. Well, I thought you'd never ask. This is my favorite glass as well it's a tumbler it's not really a glass uh insulated tumbler it does come with a lid i am choosing to pour without the lid as to not make a mess well and as well as that you're in your house i hope it's not too bumpy but that 19.2 is going to have hopefully enough room in that tumbler glass but our session ipa is a big favorite it's a big seller of ours and at that 4.7 percent alcohol with that hop aroma and bitterness we can see why it's a beer made for travel and adventure, so a travel mug is kind of perfect for it. It does have some hop aroma, so if you do have that IPA glass, it might be good to use, but while you're outside doing some yard work or maybe on a Zoom meeting, that travel mug will be a good choice too. And 
I'll tell you, this was, these two were made for each other. I'm just, I, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> Pretending that's the first time she tested this to see if it would work, but. First time. <laughs> Um, I'm still a little thirsty, so next I would like to hear about Blushing Monk. Oh yeah, Blushing Monk, we've had this for a while. Don't tell my wife I stole one of her beers, but we're gonna try it. You might see this though. <laughs> She'll probably see this, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, so John has chosen kind of a um, combination glass, maybe a little bit Pilsner, a little bit, bison glass, a little bit flute. Um, so again, we're at home, right? So we have to get creative. Uh, Blushing Monk is this beautiful raspberry Belgian style beer. So it's very um, aromatic. The nice part about a thinner glass that John is using that really forces the aroma right up to the top. So even though it's not super wide, uh, you're still getting a lovely aroma before you drink. And then Blushing is a beautiful beer. Lighter beers do really well in those tall glasses because it's a, really about the visual. You wanna see how clear that Pilsner is. You wanna see how beautiful little red that Blushing Monk is. So, yeah, when um, you're drinking on your porch, everybody can see what fancy beers you're drinking while they walk by. Yeah, from six feet away, they can see and be jealous that you're drinking Blushing Monk. Yeah, Blushing Monk's a little higher in alcohol, so this is a good, uh, don't have a Zoom meeting kind of beer, but I'm not the only one that brought high octane beers, Martin. I think you got some backwoods left for us. That is true. You, you save the highest for last at my house. So um, yes, I have uh, Backwoods Bastard and perfectly paired with my Backwoods Bastard Snifter. So nice. of course, yeah, times like this, you use what you can, but luckily I have the right brand of glassware. Yeah, those Snifters really help with the barrel aged beers. Those barrel aged beers, Typically, especially Backwoods Bastard, it has a higher alcohol, it has some nice malt notes, but it also gets some flavor from the barrel. So that beer wants to warm up a little bit, even though we store them cold at about 38 degrees to maximize the shelf life. We want them to warm up to release those aromas. So you can see Mark Wynn's hands right at the base of that glass there. And then that glass is also tapered, it's very deep, so it forces her nose right in there when she's drinking it to get a lot of those aromas. So that is actually the perfect glassware, which is, Great, it's just like the snifters that we have in our tap room. And if you have any kind of snifters at all or anything that's big like that, maybe even a big wine glass uh, to drink some of our higher octane Belgian style beers or like the Blushing Monk or barrel aged beers like our Back with Bastard, those would be good alternatives as well too. Oh yeah. Also, um, it's probably hard to tell, but I didn't pour the whole bottle in. So like John had said, to let a beer like this warm up, you're going to get a lot more aromas and uh, the flavor. Really, uh, some of our staff believes if you can't drink it at room temperature, you shouldn't drink it at all. So, um, you know, you probably are, if you're in the mood for the beer, maybe set it out a little early, let it warm. Um, and then again, of course, you know, I kind of have second beer here because I didn't pour it all at once. So it's go. all about thriftiness and uh, pacing yourself. No, I agree. I think that's good. You know, I think in these times, anything that you can find to help enjoy, see if you guys have any fun stuff that you want to pair some glasses with. Maybe, you know, comment what kind of uh, favorite beers and favorite unique glass pairings that you have uh, that you can come up with. But if you have any questions for us, um, if anything will work, uh, my motto is if it's one step above cupping it in your hands. It's probably the proper glassware right now, but if you have some other questions for us, let us know because uh, the, the first question I'll answer right now, yes, Mark and I are both gonna drink all three of these beers we just opened, so. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll wait. <laughs> uh, yeah, like John said, um, get creative, now's the time. Um, any questions, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. All right, thanks everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wait, here. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>